And I can think of no better person to ask about the situation in Ukraine. At what point does it make sense to engage seriously in diplomacy to stop the combat, and under what terms? And what would you be advising the president right. if you were in his cabinet now? My view a month or so ago was let's find some place and off ramp for everybody. Uh, maybe Putin can declare a little bit of a victory here or there. I now think if he wins in any way, the international liberal order is done. The idea that a big and supposedly powerful army would simply march west and try to take the territory of a smaller, try to obliterate a smaller mm -hmm. country is something that we cannot live with. And so I think we're doing the right thing to arm the Ukrainians who want to fight, to arm them as quickly as we can. I think we're doing better in that regard now in getting materiel to them. I think it will be harder for the Ukrainians. I think the Russians will get more brutal. And the real question is how long can Zelensky watch the wanton execution of his people without trying to strike a deal? That is really what it comes to. But from the point of view of the international community, it is better if Putin loses. As you know, this year we marked the 50th anniversary of the admission uh, uh, by Father Hesburgh's decision of undergraduate women, of a women to our undergraduate program. We are, I think it's clear, incredibly proud to call you an alumna, your, your master's degree here. Are there particular letters, lessons in leadership you learned in the course of the, your career, and what advice might you give to any leader, and particularly women? I always say you have to own the fact that you might be a first. Um, you, you, people often say these days, you know, you're, it would be so great. You must have mentors and role models who look like you. Well, frankly, if I'd been waiting for a black female Soviet specialist role model, I'd still be waiting. <laughs> and so you might be a first. And then when you are a first, uh, acknowledge it and move on, because you're not there to be a first. You're there to be whatever you are. Uh, own it so that you have prepared deeply and you know you belong in that room. Don't let somebody else's sideways glance uh, throw you off course because maybe you belong there even more than they do. And um, most importantly, um, just recognize that uh, being a first can be uncomfortable for you, but it can be uncomfortable for the others too. I actually think in a lot of our diversity efforts, um, if we think about diversity and inclusion as a two-way street, not a one-way street, it's not just your job to make me comfortable. I'm going to try to make the whole circumstance for all of us feel a little better. There are common experiences. There are common goals. There are common aspirations. And if you can focus a little bit more on those and a little less on how different we are, I think it, it helps us all. You and I share a great love for college sports. And there may be a few people in this room who share that as well with you. <laughs> but, uh, we both know it's challenging times, and we spoke about the challenging times with NIL abuses, court decisions, litigation, uh, really challenging times, for, particularly for schools like Notre Dame and Stanford, who yeah. do things in a particular way. Um, any thoughts on the way ahead? Yeah. <laughs> I'm worried because um, there, there seems to be a devaluing of the central proposition of intercollegiate athletics, which is that uh, you are... Uh, an outstanding athlete, but you really want a college education. Had we had, and you and I were on a commission on, for basketball, and we said in 2017 to the NCAA, we're not going to rule on this because you have a lot of litigation, but we're going to tell you NIL is coming. It probably ought to come, but let's put some guardrails around it so that it really is about that and not about oh boy, if you come to XYZ University, uh, we'll give you XYZ amount of money. And now it's the Wild West. And I think there are all kinds of abuses of it taking place, but they're not abuses because there are no rules. So um, I think we've got to try to get back to first principles. And I worry that we're about to kill the goose that laid the golden egg here. Yeah, yeah. I just speak, and I know for this, this whole uh, group that we couldn't be more proud to say 
that you're an alumna of Notre Dame. Uh, and uh, we just want to thank you for taking time of your busy schedule to come and talk to us. God thank bless you. you. Thank you.